Do it like a, like a, like a boss. Like a, like a boss. Do it like a, like a, like a boss. Like a boss. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Chris with Produce Like a Boss. And today we're gonna go over the Logic Drummer really quickly. Um, this is one of my favorite tools to use in Logic. It's super intuitive and really easy to use. It is the Logic Drummer. I'm gonna create a new track here and just uh, select Drummer. You can pick any one of these genres. I'm gonna just go with Songwriter for now for the purposes of this video. And what it's done is it's automatically created an eight bar loop for me. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my scissor tool right here and just snip it right there, which you can see has caused um, a change in the audio file right there. And that's because it's added a fill. So let's just jump in and have a listen real quick. Pretty straightforward ahead, kind of like a rock groove. I'm gonna pull down the loudness so you can tell by moving this knob around, you're gonna basically dial in the level of dynamics that you want. How, how loud do I want this? How complex do I want this? How soft and how simple do I want this? Right in the middle is obviously gonna be kind of even keel. And uh, as you go up louder, down, you know, it's all pretty self-explanatory. So let's see what happens when we go loud and complex. I hear some ghost notes in there. I hear some more complexity in the playing. Um, it definitely, sounds louder and uh, same thing with the soft I hear the complexity in the ghost notes and it's softer and same is gonna go for simple and um, and so on and so forth also when you get softer you can get some of these nice rim shots in there let's listen there we go so you do have to kind of play with it to dial it into taste and preference and see what you like. You know, it's not like MIDI where you can just change it and say, oh, I'm going to, you know, hit this on my key and get a sound that I'm looking for. But we will talk about that in just a second, how you can get in there and really manipulate the sound a little bit further by um, also creating some MIDI around it. But right now, let's stay on the Logic Drummer for a second. Um, so I'm just going to move this back to the center and move over to this section. Um, this is going to, and I'm going to shorten this right there. And this is going to determine what drums are playing. So right now I've got it with uh, hi-hats, kick and snare, and uh, this is the level of fills I've got. And you just, just changing that knob is gonna just change and give you a bunch of different options. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I wanna hear what it sounds like with cymbals. I want those cymbals to be busier. And even busier. And so on and so forth. You know, I want to add some tambourine. Busier. And even busier. And I'm going to turn that tambourine off and go back to our hi-hats. Now, right now, you're not able to really, um, you, you kind of have to maneuver everything as a whole. So you can't make that tambourine louder per se. Um, but we're going to talk about that in just a second when we talk about how to separate out your tracks when you're done creating it. So right now we're just doing everything as a whole. Uh, let's go ahead and swing this track. There we go. Boom. Ba -ga, boom. Ba -ga. It turns into more of a shuffle swing feel. And uh, I think Oh, also we can go into halftime here and we can also go into double time. Cool. So I'm just going to go back to uh, pattern one. I'm going to take the swing down just a little bit and the fills down and see what that sounds like. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Perfect. That's perfect for now for me. And let's go ahead and hit Y and we'll have a look at some other options we have. So not only can you select the genre that you want to use, you can also select what drummer you want. So we've got Darcy, she's the pop songwriter, and we're, we're in the songwriter genre right now. Levi's like the funky songwriter, maybe more like a Jason Mraz. We've got experimental, we've got roots, you know, 60s. And uh, oh, there's actually a couple of new ones that I haven't seen before. So that'll be fun to dig into later. But just, you know, go ahead and select the players and play with them and see what feels good to you. Um, you can change out the player, you can change out the drum kit. So let's say you like Darcy, she comes with the blue bird kit's pretty standard but we want to hear what she sounds like on the Liverpool kit let's see what that difference is big difference right and then once you select that drum kit you can actually go into your drum kit right here on your channel strip and then adjust even more from there so like let's click on this kick I can pick out a different kick and then once I'm on that kick, I can actually tune it, dampen it, and change the gain of it for, for volume. So, I mean, you can really get in there and make some adjustments, which is really nice. 
So here's something really cool that Logic has done, and I kind of discovered this by accident one day, so I'm going to show it to you. Um, you can go ahead and create an arrangement using their arrangement markers, and and I'll show you how that works. But first, I'm going to mute this, and let's just let's just add, and see what they do intuitively. Intro, fine. Verse, sure. And it's, it's just automatically adding eight bars of everything. And I'm just going to let it run with its bad self. Go on, Logic. Uh, verse, chorus, okay. Bridge, no, I probably put, would, uh, wouldn't put a bridge there. I'd probably put a verse there. After that, I'd probably do another chorus, but let's see what it says. Perfect. After the chorus, let's call it a bridge. Done. Now, guys, if it selects something you don't want, just click on it and go, no, right there, I want to put, you know, that. Um, so bridge is good. And then after that, I would like another chorus. And then after that, let's say outro. And there we go. Okay, and then we've got an intro, then everything is eight bars, that's fine. But if you wanted to adjust it, all you gotta do is pull it like slow, like so. <laughs> so I'm gonna put that back to uh, eight bars. And then now when I create a Logic Drummer, um, look what happens. It's actually made all of its own sections, right? So this is what you know it thinks that an intro should sound like. Let's have a listen. Okay, let's have a listen to what they think the verse should sound like. And you can hear that it's lifted dynamically a little bit. And then let's hear what it sounds like going into the chorus. It's added a bit of a percussion. We've got a tambourine. It's got, you know, you can actually see right down here on the bottom what it's doing. And of course you can make adjustments. So it's doing that to kind of lay out a roadmap for you, which is really cool. But then you can go in and tweak it and make your own adjustments. Another way that you can go about doing this um, without using their, uh, if you want to be, I like to be a little more hands-on from the beginning. I don't want it to just map everything out for me. I kind of like to build as I go. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide that arrangement window and uh, mute this. And I'll actually hide that track too. So it's just like not visually in my way. And what I do is I, I do my own uh, arrangements using markers to begin with. So let's do that. My marker, my intros, I like to make them red. And uh, my verses are yellow. So I'm just going to pretend like I've got a song built out right here. And then my courses are kind of like this blue purple. And then let's do another. Let's gnash half this one. And we'll just call that a half verse. And then we'll make that go straight into the chorus. And then let's do like, um, let's say that our bridge is going to be about eight bars as well. And then we'll have a final chorus and an outro of like four bars, right? And so that's what my arrangement looks like oftentimes in a song that I'm doing. And I do a lot of pop and some pop country and stuff. So in fact, I would, I might even like get rid of that and make my intro just uh, four bars. So, hmm, what would I do? What I would do is I would uh, just start with the drummer track just like this with the intro and I'm going to go over my library by pushing Y and let's get on songwriter. I actually really like uh, Darcy. I'm going to change that drummer and let's say that the top of this song starts with kind of like kind of the same level as the chorus. So I'm going to put some cymbals in there, maybe a little tambourine. Fills look good. I'm going to take that swing off. I don't really need it and let's have a listen. Kind of loud, a little complex, but not too crazy. Let's have a listen. You know what, I'm also going to change that kit back out because I really like the Bluebird kit with uh, Darcy's style of playing. Yeah, it's got like high energy, it's good, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and drag that over. And now, now we're at the verse section, but obviously this is mirrored to the previous section of my intro. So I'm just going to make changes accordingly. We're going to come from that high energy down to like more of a verse energy. So I'm going to pull this going soft. And I'm going to make it a little complex because I want some of those ghost notes in there. I'm going to switch it to a hi-hat and keep it on uh, level one, which I know is going to be pretty sparse. Keep my fills down at a minimum, which means it's going to fill at the end of wherever the region ends. So if my region ends there, it's going to fill there. If it ends there, it's going to fill there. So I'm going to leave it there because I want to fill just before the second half of that verse. So let's have a listen. Get that tambourine out of there. I actually want more hi-hat. Yeah. And then let's get a little fill right into the next section. I'm going to copy, paste, and drag that over. And then I'm going to make another fill. I don't want it to be the same, though. A drummer probably wouldn't play that same fill going into the course. He'd probably do something a little different, maybe even bigger to get into the course. So let's adjust that. And then it's going to get into our course. Great. 
So now I'm gonna look at our course section. I'm gonna also copy, by the way, that's option, click, and drag. And now I'm at a course section, and I think that's gonna be more similar to my intro section. This, you know, I'm kind of just guessing what kind of song I'm building, which is, you know, like a standard like pop or pop rock or country pop song. Uh, so let's listen to this verse, or I'm sorry, this chorus drum. Let's get back our cymbals. Let's add that tambourine in. Let's increase our fills, and let's increase our dynamics louder more complex, right? Maybe fills are not that intense right now. And then we'll copy paste that over. Listen to that fill. Same thing, it's copied over, but I'm gonna adjust my fill just by moving this a little bit and now it's going to give me a different fill. Boom, and then now I can see that, okay, I'm at verse and another chorus. So I can literally grab that and copy paste and just pull it over and now this is also a verse this is also a course now i could have it be the same or i could change it like my first verse this is where the settings were maybe i want to take it up in volume just a little bit because depending on where your or your arrangement is going as a producer you've probably increased the energy with your instrumentation no problem just pull this up a little bit and adjust accordingly same thing with this next course um i'm gonna go ahead and get even louder and a little more complex and maybe i'll kick up the symbols to the next level of symbols and they'll be even busier right and I'm gonna do the same thing here and then increase my fills now I'm not sure I'm just hypothetically saying like you know oh this is probably like this but I think you know since we've got such high energy here in this chorus I'm probably gonna drop the bridge down a little bit so I'm gonna just grab this verse section copy paste and drag it over here but then I'm gonna throw on some toms and let's just highlight that section have a listen so it feels kind of like a breakdown, you know? And then uh, I'm just gonna repeat that section. That was Command R to just copy paste it over. Nice little fill there. But maybe we'll make it a little louder since we're gonna be <clears throat> increasing the energy as we get into our final course. And then I'm gonna do the same thing and just copy paste over that last course that I had. And then maybe to, let's see, how can we add something different? You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Command D, creating a duplicate track, and then I'm going to copy and drag that down and then in here I'm going to just take out the drums and just add claps see so you can use it you don't you can actually use it for just percussion only like if you wanted to just throw shakers or a clap so and take make sure you do the fills out when you do that and so let's have a listen to that one and we'll call this claps awesome and then this is my outro I'm going to go ahead and use my intro for my outro and one cool little thing that I noticed here is that if you if you let it stop here at the last bar, it'll stop abruptly. And it kind of cuts off, which can be a cool ending depending on what you want to do. But if you want that final, like last, like, bone, take a bone, and you want that like kind of diamond or like whole note at the end, just pull this out a hair and it will give you that crash that you're looking for. You know? So... I mean, how easy is that? How easy is it to build that drummer and track? And like, just know that anywhere you, you cut, it's going to create a fill there, by the way. Um, so I don't know. I just find that this is so easy and intuitive. You can use the, the arrangement markers like I just showed you. You can build your own markers and just build as you go. And uh, I mean, it sounds pretty good and you can tweak. And okay, so let's move on to my, my next thing I'm pretty excited about with the Logic Drummer is let's create just a software instrument track. Empty is fine because we're going to select um, the same kit over here. Let's go ahead and select Drum Kit Bluebird. And then um, we'll go ahead and just copy paste this down. And now it's gonna give us the MIDI, right? So I've got my MIDI controller right here. Okay, so now you have access. So if you actually wanted to go in and, and play something and change something, you could, because now you've got a way to manipulate that MIDI. So, so now that you've got it in the form of MIDI, you can actually manipulate it and control it in any way that you'd like. So let's say, let's mute that. So let's say you wanted to get in there and change the kick pattern. Let's say you wanted to go boom, cat, boom, boom, cat. Uh-uh, let's move it one over. Cat, boom, boom, cat. 
So you can really get in there once you have um, changed it over to MIDI and actually add and take away the things that you don't want. Um, it's just super cool to be able to use the drummer at first because it's so intuitive and it really plays like a like a real drummer would as opposed to mapping it all out with MIDI. And I don't know, maybe you're not really there yet with your drum programming skills on MIDI and so you're not able to get that kind of performance. So it's I think it's great to be able to grab from it, start there, and then tweak moving forward. So another cool thing about moving it to MIDI like this is that once you have it con uh, converted to MIDI like this, check this out. I'm gonna create, uh, go ahead and just change. Like this is the Logic Drummer, but I also use Steven Slate Drums and I also use Easy Drummer. So most of them kind of have the same uh, map going as far as the MIDI drums go. So let's go here and go to like uh, Tune Track, Easy Drummer. So now if I wanted to use a third party plugin, I can still use the loops that I got from Logic, but use a different drum kit. Like, how cool is that? I love the Steven uh, Slate stuff. Um, I love the Easy Drummer stuff. I just happened to op see Easy Drummer first, so that's what I opened, but let's have a listen. Now we've got all these different kits to choose from. Obviously, that's not a good one <laughs> to use for this one. Uh, let's see. Let's just start here and see. 80s, right? So, I mean, you can go through and pick whatever kit you want. Let's see, what does a easy, the pop, I like the pop kit in Easy Drummer. Let's listen to that. And then, you know, so on and so forth. You can grab Steven Slate, you can grab Easy Drummer. Um, I'm not sure how Addictive Drums works. I haven't quite dug into that one, but the idea is the MIDI is, is transferable to wherever you want to put it. So if you wanted to be able to <clears throat> actually separate out your drums for the purposes of leveling and mixing, um, then what you would do is you would create a producer track. So you're gonna go to software instrument and we are going to select it from our drum kit under producer kits and I'll go to Bluebird, which is gonna create the ability to multi out, right? So once I've got this Bluebird uh, producer kit open, I'm gonna grab these tracks and I'm actually gonna just pull them down right here, which will turn it into MIDI. And then from there, we can go to File, Bounce, Track in Place, and then you can do uh, New Track, Include Instrument Multi Outputs, right? So once I do that, it's actually gonna separate all the tracks out. So now if you you know wanna get into mixing the drums even further, you can do that. And then voila, everything is separated for you and you can adjust your volume and your panning and then you know just get into treating these however you like as separate audio files rather than as one. Anyways, uh, my name is Chris. This is Produce Like a Boss. Don't forget to hit the bell and subscribe and uh, please drop a comment if there's anything you'd like to learn in Logic Pro. I'd love to help you out, okay? I'll talk to you soon, bye.